Anyone who wants the U.S. to attack Iran is an enemy of humanity. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. Anyone who wants the U.S. and its allies to attack Iran is a psychopath. People who want to unleash a war of that scale upon our species should be rejected from our society as aggressively as child molesters and Nazis. A new CNN report says multiple Biden administration officials, quote, saw Iran's attack on Israel Saturday as disproportionate to Israel's strikes in Damascus that prompted the retaliation, end quote. There are zero reported fatalities as a result of the Iranian retaliation. The Israeli strikes on the Iranian embassy in Damascus killed 16 people, including multiple high-level Iranian military officials. To see Iran's response as disproportionate is to admit you believe Israeli lives are worth literally orders of magnitude more than Iranian lives. And it was an embassy, for God's sake. Israel can assassinate 16 people while shattering decades of diplomatic norms, and in the eyes of the U.S., that's still not as bad as Iran creating a few potholes in an Israeli street. And anyway, how obscene is it that these shit stains can babble about proportionality at all after backing Israel's mass atrocities in Gaza? When Iran attacks, the response needs to be proportionate. But when Israel incinerates Gaza over October 7th, it's LMAO, fuck around and find out, laugh cry emoji, Israeli flag. Tweet from Ali Abu Nima. Video I just received shows the Berlin police arresting the spokesperson of Jewish Voice for Peace in Germany, Udi Raz, as horrified onlookers shout never again amid these scenes so reminiscent of Germany's Nazi past. Quote by Caitlin. No, no, you don't understand. This time Germany is rounding up Jews to fight anti-Semitism. After six months of mass murder and chaos, the only thing that looks more absurd than the claim that Israel is morally superior to other nations in the Middle East is the claim that the United States is morally superior to other nations in the world. No matter how low your opinion was of Western power structures and Western civilization, if you've been watching events of the last six months with sincerity, it will have sunk even lower by now. Tweet from the Spectator Index. Breaking, NBC News reports that President Joe Biden has privately expressed concern that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is trying to drag the U.S. more deeply into a broader conflict. It's so obnoxious how the mass media are helping the White House pretend that this is something the Biden administration is just passively sitting around hoping doesn't happen. As though the U.S. hasn't had the power to end all this every single day for the last six months. It's just an easily quantifiable fact that the Trump administration was vastly less warlike and murderous than the Biden administration has been. This doesn't mean Trump wasn't warlike and murderous. It doesn't even mean Trump wouldn't have been doing more or less the same evil things that Biden has been doing if he'd won in 2020. But it does mean the entire mainstream liberal narrative about what Trump is and what Biden is has been complete bullshit this entire time, which necessarily means the whole mainstream narrative about the U.S. political system is a lie. It's possible that as the United States was first beginning to move toward planetary hegemony, there were some empire managers operating in good faith who sincerely believed U.S. unipolarity could be a force for achieving world peace. It's doubtful that everyone constructing this monstrosity has been an evil, mustache-twirling cartoon villain who wanted to see nonstop violence, oppression, and nuclear brinkmanship inflicted upon populations around the globe. But that's what wound up happening. And of course it did. The belief that a regime can take over the world by any amount of force necessary and create peace and prosperity for all was always a poorly reasoned fantasy of deeply unwise minds. Of course there are going to be populations who refuse to be subjugated, and some of them are going to have nuclear weapons, and others will have conventional weapons but defend their sovereignty tooth and claw. Most of the violence and Cold War brinkmanship you see in international conflicts today is a direct result of this dynamic. The U.S. centralized empire's foreign policy is one long and unrelenting war against disobedience. It is simply not possible to bring the entire human species under one single power umbrella without copious amounts of violence and tyranny. If we keep going along this trajectory, the empire's war on disobedience is going to lead to nuclear Armageddon someday.